This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good morning everyone. Shalom Aleichem. This is uh, our first official Wednesday morning uh, Torah get-together. This is uh, just a brief Tvar Torah. Uh, there's an interesting Indian that we encounter in terms of the Kohen Gadol's preparation for Yom HaKippurim. We know on Yom Kippur the Kohen is Mekadesh Yadav Raglav before he dons his clothing. A total of 10 Kiddush Yadav Viraglav. 10 times Kohen Gadol sanctifies his hands and his feet. And there is a mitzvah for any Kohen to be Mekadesh Yadav Viraglav before he does the Avoida. So it's not only on Yom Kippur that the Kohen Gadol is Mekadesh Yadav Viraglav 10 times, but any Kohen before he does the Avoida, he has a mitzvah to sanctify his hands and his feet like it says, Virachatsu Aharoin Uvanov Mimenu Es Yedehem Ve'es Raglehem. So, how did the Koyen sanctify his hands and his feet? It's a Gemara in Zvachim on your Testament base. So, the Gemara brings a mach like this. One opinion is he puts his right hand on his right foot and his left hand on his left foot. Fine. Rabbi Yoisi, Rabbi Huda says, he puts his two hands, one on top of each other, and on top of his two legs, one on top of each other. The Lashon on the Gemara is, Maniach shte yodav zu agabe zu, vial gabe shte raglav zu agav zu, umakadesh. Another thing we know about the way the Koyhanim uh, conducted themselves in the Beis HaMikdash, the Gemara in Yuman Dav Samach Testament Aleph says, the young Koyhanim Perche Kuhuna would not sleep in their big day Kuhuna. Instead, they would fold up their clothing and they would put it under their head and they would sleep. So there's a Sefer Be'er Sheva, it's one of the early Achroidim. And in Masech Tahirios, he raises the following question. How could the Kaihanim sanctify their hands and their feet according to Yosef Rabbi Yehuda? Which was done hand on foot, hand on foot. How could the Kaihanim put their clothing under their head, the Gemara in Haria says, all of these things are kasha l'shikha. They could bring to forgetting one's learning. The Gemara in Haria says, Nandaf Yud Gimel, Chamisha Dvara Meshachem Es Halimod, one who washes their feet, one on top of the other. Or, there's an opinion, Af Hameniach Kelev Tachas Merash Yosef, one who puts their kalim under their head. So you're not supposed to do things that make you forget your learning. And yet we encounter in the Beis HaMikdash that there were two activities that were done that seemed to be kasha l'shikha. That's the question of the Be'er Sheva. Rav Ruven Margolios, Rav Ruven Margolios was one of the great Mechabre Svarma of the 20th century. He, his most well-known work perhaps is the Margolios Hayama Masech the Sanhedrin. He wrote a perush on Shekhanach called Nefesh Chaya. And he says that it's very possible <clears throat> that all of the activities mentioned in the Gemara and Harias that make a person forget, that's only in general they make a person forget. However, that's if you're in a realm of katnos, of smallness. But in the Beis HaMikdash, which was Oiroi Shaloylam, you're in a different realm, you're not going to be limited, you're not going to be mitigated, you're not going to be diminished by these type of things. In other words, these types of practices that in general have a supernatural effect to make a person forget their learning, they don't affect a person outside of the uh, Beis HaMikdash. They only affect a person um, inside, they don't affect a person inside of the Beis HaMikdash, only outside of the Beis HaMikdash. Similarly, the Chabina Rav and the Doviv Meisharim he brings from Rav Aaron of Bells that by Dvarim Kedoshim we're not afraid it's going to come to Shikha. An example is the Gemara in Tamid and Av Chavches says that the Ish Har Habayis would say to the Kayin Shalom Alecha and the Ravid asks you know how to greet your friend that night we're afraid maybe it's a shade. So the answer the Ravid gives is well in the Azara there are no shade in there. The, the, the shadim do not affect the azara. Likewise, the concept of sh- kasha l'shikha does not affect the azara. And, uh, and therefore, 
the, the Koyin can wash their foot one on top of the other. They could put their clothing under their head. I would like to advance uh, something similar, but a bit different. <coughs> Reb Chaim Knievsky, in the Zmirois of Reb Chaim Knievsky, Reb Chaim pointed out that sometimes if somebody is changing their clothing, the covered Shabbos, one might uh, switch by putting the right on the left side and wearing clothing in the uh, opposite manner is one of the things which is kasha l'shikha. But Reb Chaim said, since it's being done l'kavet Shabbos, then uh, it's not subject to kasha l'shikha. And they bring the following story. There was once a very heavy snowfall in New York, and somebody knew their neighbor was away for Shabbos, and they were afraid that if uh, people saw that in front of their neighbor's house, the snow was untouched, and the thieves might see and recognize that nobody's home, so, and they might use the opportunity to steal. So the neighbor be, wanted to be a friendly neighbor, so he walked back and forth, back and forth in front of his neighbor's house, up and down the steps, to sort of uh, make an indication that they were home. He was worried afterwards that maybe he was Mechal Shabbos because he was intentionally making a footprint, which is a shape, and it would last for some time. Maybe somehow it's Ksiva. So he asked Reb Chaim. Reb Chaim said, look, in the future, if such a situation would arise, it's better to do it with a Shinoi. The, you know, obviously you're allowed to walk in the snow, and if you unintentionally make a footprint, that's fine. But to intentionally make a footprint, it's better to avoid that. Next time, do it with a shinoi. For example, Reb Chaim said, put your right shoe on your left foot and your left shoe on your right foot. So Reb Chaim's grandson was there. He said, what do you mean? Putting what, the shoe, a shoe on the wrong foot is kasha l'shikha. Reb Chaim has a sefer called Sefer Hazikarain where he brings... All of the things that are kasha l'shikha and chelik beis or islamid, Reb Chaim brings wearing the wrong shoe on the wrong foot is kasha l'shikha. Says Reb Chaim, no, yoim shabbosoin ein l'shkoyach. There's no forgetting on Shabbos. That's what Reb Yehuda Halevi writes in the Zemer. Yoim shabbosoin ein l'shkoyach. Literally, you can't forget Shabbos, but it homiletically is interpreted on Shabbos. There's no forgetting, so you don't have to worry about that. So they asked Reb Chaim, does that mean you're allowed to do on Shabbos the things that are kasha l'shikha? Reb Chaim said, no, chas v'shalom. Even though Shabbos uh, aids memory, it doesn't mean you should go out of your way that you could do things that hurt your memory, but that you can't rely on. But if you need to do something, L'tzorach Shabbos, that usually causes forgetfulness, you can rely on the Koch of Shabbos that you won't forget. So they asked Reb Chaim, well you write, based on the Gemara in Horiois, in Sefer HaZikar, in Chelek Beis, Ois Yed Aleph, that one should not eat olives regularly. Olives are kasha l'shikha. Can you eat olives at the Shabbos meal? Reb Chaim said, yes, yes. If you're eating olives to be mechabit Shabbos, they won't cause you to forget. By the way, the Reb Chaim himself was careful not to eat olives, even on Shabbos. And Reb Chaim said, you know, the Yushalmi says in Bracha is that by learning in a shul, it aids your memory. So on Shabbos, people go to shul to learn. So that also increases and enhances memory. And therefore, on Shabbos, if you're eating olives, the covered Shabbos, Reb Chaim said, that's permitted. By the way, Reb Chaim said... Um, there's a Sfas Emes in Parashas Kisisa that the reason why the Torah you learn on Shabbos is not forgotten is because forgetting is a function of the guf, the body. Shabbos is the day of the soul. Reb Chaim also said that since Shabbos is me'en o'elam haba, just like in the world to come, the Medrash and the Yalkut Shmani on Yeshaya says that we won't forget our learning in o'elam haba, Torah learned on Shabbos is not easily forgotten. Be it as it may, we have this principle that even though ordinarily there are certain things that are kasha l'shikha, the realm of Shabbos protects a person that they, they won't forget, even if they do something which is kasha l'shikha on Shabbos. Perhaps we could say then, it's the same thing for the Beis HaMikdash. 
Because we know, and we've said many times, that there's something called nefesh, um, where you have, um, there's something excuse me, called ashan. Ashan is oilam, shana, nefesh. That there are similar dimensions in place, in time, and in person. So, what Shabbos is in time, the Beis Hamikdash is in place. Shabbos is the Beis Hamikdash of the week, and the Beis Hamikdash is the Shabbos of place. That being the case, and that's why on Shabbos we, in the session Kabbalah Shabbos, that's the time we we ask Hashem to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash. Well, if you look at Kabbalah Shabbos, the majority of Kabbalah Shabbos is about prayer to rebuild Yushalayim, to rebuild the Beis Hamikdash, to restore Malchus Beis David, to restore prophecy. Why do we make these requests on Shabbos? Because what Shabbos is in time, the Beis Hamikdash is in place. So Shabbos is like the Beis Hamikdash of time. So since it's Shabbos, we utilize the opportunity to daven for the Beis Hamikdash. Then perhaps we can say just like Yoim Shabbos in English Goyach, just like there's no forgetting on Shabbos, perhaps then there's also, there's no forgetting in the Beis Hamikdash. There's no forgetting in the Temple. But we could also add that just like on Shabbos, one does not forget because, Shab- because forgetting is a function of the body and Shabbos is the day of the soul, so too the Beis Hamikdash is the place of the soul, like we say in Karibayin. We say in Karibayin, um, L'mikdash eich tov u'lekoidesh kodshem. Asar dive yachadun ruchin venafshin. It's the place where spirit and soul rejoice. So just like Shabbos, there's no forgetting because it's the day of the soul. In the Beis Hamikdash, perhaps there's no forgetting. It's the makamim of the soul. But we could also spin it the other way. And why is it that there's no forgetting on Shabbos? We could say, if Rebruve Margolius says there's no forgetting in the Beis Hamikdash because forgetting is only in a place of katnus smallness and histalgos hamoichen, then just like there's no forgetting of the Beis Hamikdash and the Koyen can wash one foot on top of the other and could put his clothing under his head, so too there's no forgetting on Shabbos. But this is a, a very beautiful uh, interpretation of what we say in the Zvirois, Yoim Shabbosoin Ein Lashkayach. Okay, wish everyone a wonderful uh, day. To Please join us for tonight's shir on Lad Ba'imer, wishing everyone a wonderful day. Rachavat Sacha, Kol You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.